Chapter 7 The Secret of Wealth Some people have the secret of wealth. They have got marvellous principles, and they know how to work magic that brings them plenty of money. Some people will do anything for you. They will forget and they will forgive. They will take the shirt off their backs to help you. It is their disposition. That is why they are prosperous. They have been brought up to love money and to understand it. When they were children, their parents let them play with money on the table and would play with money on the floor. They let them play with money rather than other things that children play with, like teddy bears and engines. And when they sent them to a shop, these children know the value of money and you can't fool them. They have grown up saying about handling cash and notes and they know how to live prosperously. Have you taught your children the value of money? No. Most children are never taught. Mothers have said, never do anything for money, dear. Think how they have closed their channels. You have to learn to open those channels again and understand the law that it is only as we give that we receive. Watch the children of money conscious parents. They will play at store with other children. They will have pins, matches, sugar, tea, soap, all sorts of things in their toy store to exchange. Business methods should be taught from boyhood. They are taught how to trade from little babies. It is not long before they have everything from the others. They give and give and give of their supplies, and they have to run home to mother for more. The shrewdness of these children and the ignorance of the untaught children is astounding. It is no wonder they grow up to be successful. They understand the law of exchange. They know that it is absolutely as you give that you receive. And giving in this sense is also your vibration to the universe of your dream already achieved and how that feels good as already achieved. That's giving to the universe and the universe gives back in abundance. You have got to make yourself a channel, a magnet, and keep your channel open and your mind alert. If you do not speak to your subconscious mind every day and command money and know in your heart because you have asked it is coming, then you are not alert. You have to ask incessantly and make yourself so glad that it is coming that you can hardly contain your joy. Make yourself as excited and happy as though someone had just told you you have won a million pounds. Why? You will not be able to sleep at night. Make yourself that glad. Believe it. The money conscious parent teaches the child, wealth wants me, not I want wealth. And they are taught to love it and welcome it. This is the difference between you and the other fellow. Command and you will get it. Ask and you shall receive. Command from the universe and you shall receive although not commanding in an arrogant way, commanding in a grateful way, thanking that it has already been done. Never stop asking till you do get it, and if you do not get it straight away, it is your test. Pass it victoriously. Continue to believe, for when you have once passed your test, you do not have a similar test again. Keep on and on. Do not take no for an answer. Some people say, when my ship comes in, good God, it has been in the harbour for years waiting to be unloaded and you didn't know it. Know that you can begin unloading your ship today. It is in the harbour and your belief will materialise it. Your belief will help you to unload it. There is no lack in the world. The lack is in you. I have to read that again. There is no lack in the world. The lack is in you. And if you will stop seeing lack and feeling fear of lack and stop thinking lack and see abundance, feel abundant, think abundance, you will make marvellous demonstrations. Get money, if only for the satisfaction it will give you when you have got it. You can always give it away if you don't really want it, but do be rich. When you sing, quote, Mercy drops round me are falling, unquote. You are mad. Yes, you are. 
You are negative and not in your right mind. You do not want mercy drops. You want showers in plenty. And you can get it if you are positive. Get a new understanding of money. Do you bless every penny that you send out and command it to return to you multiplied a millionfold that you may have plenty in your storehouse? Many wealthy people do this and do it regularly. They do, they do not bless their money in a haphazard way either. They do it with faith and with reverence. They treat it sacredly. If you are in earnest and you have belief and you bless your money, asking it to return to you multiplied, it will do so. If you command big money and believe in your heart, you will receive big money. But there must always be action. Work hard at your business or profession. Fill in the lottery if you want to, but do something. Money, stacks of it, wads of crisp notes and bags of shining silver and gold. What dreams it conjures up for us, doesn't it? If only you could win the lottery or get a mighty windfall, the world would be your oyster, wouldn't it? You could do anything, have anything, go anywhere, do anything. You wouldn't feel tired any more. You would feel young and boisterous. Your belief can win you a prize so big in money that you will be staggered. Your belief can bring you a windfall so enormous that you can only think you were dreaming. Solomon said that there was a time for everything. And at the right time you will get it, if you believe. There are unseen powers and higher dimensions at work for you. And the unseen is what does the trick. Ask any magician. What shall it be? A voyage around the world? A castle? Race horses? Your own aeroplane? Or just a swimming pool in the garden? You have only to make up your mind and work with the law. Another secret of some people's great prosperity is that they carry in their pocket a small gold piece, solid gold, or a handbag. They carry in their pocket or handbag a roll of notes that they can hardly span, rolled tight. They do not carry small coins because like attracts like, so they would only get small coins. When do you send your money out, remember always to bless it. Ask it to bless everybody that touches it, and command it to go out and feed the hungry and clothe the naked, and command it to come back to you a millionfold. Don't pass over this lightly. I am serious. Bless it. Brackets. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. Speak the blessing. Is what every magician does before he works magic. I have said this before, but it is important that you remember it. There is a vast difference between sending out your money without any thought, or sending it out with a thought that it is going to multiply. It is wonderful, really, because it does work magic, it does bring results. You may never be without money in your wallet or your purse. Money is a magnet. Money is energy. And everything is energy, including your vibration. So align yourself with the right vibration to attract money. Without money in your wallet, how can you attract money? Money draws money. Like attracts like. Carry a large note for luck and you will attract large, attract large notes. Do not carry a penny or a threepenny bit. It will bring you its own like. A penny or threepence is all that will come to you. The thing you want that you've got to be. If you want to be wealthy, you've got to represent wealth. So make sacrifices and save. Save until you can carry a large note around with you in your wallet. Visualize intensely. If you have a one pound note in your hand, see three knots after it. That makes it one thousand. You send that vision out and it has to manifest itself to you. It is the law of visualization. You have got to expand in consciousness, get the money consciousness. You must not be content to deal in three pences. A bank manager once told me, you'll be surprised the number of people who collect three pence penny bits. Well, 
That is all they will ever draw to them. That is not the way to work magic. Personally, I refuse to look at a penny or a threepenny bit more than I can possibly help. If I have a penny, I will usually leave it in my pocket and change a sixpence or a shilling. You must see silver and not coppers. Get rid of coppers as soon as you can. I do. I won't have anything to do with them if I can help it. You cannot draw shillings to you if you see pennies. It is what you see that matters. You must spend silver. You must spend notes. You must see them all the time. Get rid of your coppers or change them quickly into silver. Refuse to deal in little coins. You have got to enlarge your consciousness. You have got to get the rich consciousness. Never give a penny in a collection. If you do, that is all you will get back. As you give, you receive. I must keep drumming this into you. I want you to never forget it. That thou seest, that thou beest. Unquote. Train yourself to deal in silver or notes. Before long you will be much better off. You have got to see the larger denomination. Some people can never think beyond silver, and they think they are doing fine. I am telling you what I know from my experience draws money to you, and quickly. The master psychologist gave the world the finest get-rich-quick method ever known. The first law of business is give and take, but always it is to give first and take second. You have got to give before you can take. I know a woman who put a new pound note in a collection and she said she would never forget it. She felt so rich. She gave it, not of her abundance, but of her necessity. But she felt as though she owned the universe. It was a wonderful feeling, she said. She blessed the money and wished it much more than she was giving. And wished it was much more than she was giving. And three days later, from a quite unexpected source, she received very much, much more money back than she had given. This is a great secret to money magic. You must bless your money when you send it out, and you must ask it to return multiplied. It will. I assure you it will. Did you ever see a prosperous man counting his money with a long face? Damp his fingers and turn the notes away from him as he counts those he is getting out of the pack for you? Never. He knows better. He smiles, damps his fingers, licks his fingers and turns the notes towards him and he is thinking with that smile they are coming back they are coming back and roll your notes if you haven't got any now you should have plenty by the time you finish reading this book put an elastic band around them because don't you see it represents without beginning and without end the circle of the elastic band represents without beginning and without end so that you may never begin to want and your money will never end Lots of moneyed people do that. Bless your money every morning. Start your day right. Get into the habit of thinking in thousands, millions if you want. See thousands of notes. And when you project your thoughts into the electric magnetism, the ether, it has to take place. When money begins to come in, you must first use it for whatever you have asked it for. A mother asks for money for a new dress, but when the money comes she buys trousers for Tommy. She has misappropriated that money and violated the law. Interesting perspective here. Another thing you can do is fold a note in half long ways, then fold it into three to make a triangle when the two ends meet. This represents the trinity and represents a blessing of money for you. I have actually known people to kiss their money goodbye. Never say goodbye. Never think goodbye. Either to friends or money. Words are creative. Choose the right words. I remember having done it before I came into the knowledge. If you say goodbye, you separate yourself from your money as substance. When you give it out and you never expect it to return to you again, then you deliberately sever your connection between you and your money. That money does not want to come back to you, and it will not do so either. Love money. Love money for the energy and joy it can give to people, give to you, for the experiences it can afford you for the luxury style lifestyle it can afford you to better yourself spiritually mentally physically every way and everyone you know people say sometimes that it is wicked to love money but it is not 
Oscar Wilde, I think, said, it is the lack of money that is the root of all evil. Um, if you have £5,000 given to you today, you could do wonderful things, not only for yourself but for others. If you had £10 million given to you today, you could do wonderful things, not only for yourself but for others. Yet, you could draw money thousands more if you had only worked the law. You could draw many thousands much more if you could only work the law. The best way to get money that is owing to you is to give it to the person who owns it. Interesting angle here. Do not put anyone in bondage. When you loan a person money and exact an interest and they have nothing at all, you are putting that person in bondage to you. You are tying their hands and closing their channels. What you do do, what you do, do to the other fellow you get back. You put yourself under the law when you bondage another. Quote, thou shalt not, unquote. And if you do, you have to pay an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and you will find yourself indebted to someone else. Never bondage anyone. Never loan. Give it. That is the way to get money. You have got to get the rich consciousness. I have said that before, but it is important. It is not the rich consciousness you possess when you bondage another. You must give it. That, quote, plenty of wealth, unquote, has got to be in your mind and in your heart. If you not, do not feel rich in your mind, how are you going to feel rich in your wallet? What about your idea? If your idea is rich, will not your thoughts be rich? Declare day after day, I am rich. I am rich. I have sown my seed. Do you think it is going to take form in the form of an empty wallet if you take your creation that far? Never. By thinking the rich word, the right thought, you produce plenty. Everything has to start in the mind. There is simply nothing in this world that does not come out of mind. If you cannot get your bills paid, don't get into a temper, as so many people do. Sit in the silence and tell those people they are honest and upright and that you know they are coming to you to pay their bills. Send love, bless them. Ask the universe to bless them and give them the money they owe you. Say, I have faith in you. There was a man who stole money from his employer and nobody could find where he had gone. But the employer was an unusual man and what he did was devote a certain time each day to sit in the silence. He would send that man love, universal love. I have faith in you, he would think. I know you are coming back to make good. Time went on, but the day came when the thief actually returned. He was in tatters and rags, and his feet were bleeding. He knelt before his employer. Here I am, he said. I give myself up to you. Do with me as you want to. Imagine the situation. What did the employer do? Did he turn around and swear at him, call the police, have him up for robbery? Indeed, no. God bless you, he said. I knew you would come back and make good. Quote, dot, 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 come back and make good, unquote. Why, that is all I have heard day after day, the thief said. Aren't you going to have me arrested? No, said the employer. You are going to make good, and I am going to give you a job. And that man took him back, because it was up to him to do it. And the thief turned out a splendid man. He was given a second chance. You, know, you can use your own discretion here in this. Some people are parasites and will take you for all your work. Other people have goodness in them. There are some people who give what they cannot get in seven years. They write out a receipt in full for what is owing so that the unfortunate one can start afresh. You do the same thing in mind and it works in the same way. You go into the silence and give all the money that is owing you. Then watch it come right up to you in place of business, every penny of it. Wealth wants you, and if your heart is in the right place, it will come to you, heaped up, pressed down, and running over. Give a tenth of your money to the sick and the poor and the needy. If you do not do this, you stop your flow of money. Yes, this is a tithing principle. Ten percent of your money must be put aside for those in distress. Your tithed money is for the poor, who come to you for help. Your tithe belongs first to the poor, and because people have failed to do that, they become poor themselves. 
Your subconscious will draw to you the ones you have to look after, after that tide money. So you need never, as long as you live, refuse to help anyone. You cannot loan that money, you must give that money. Think how wonderful it is to one who is passing through the dark night of the soul to have someone come and say, Here, brother, don't worry, you won't be thrown out of your house. You pay the rent the first week and the second and the third if needs be. Your subconscious has led you to that family which are po so poor to help them until they are able to get on their feet. And what a blessing it is. How many are in this position today because someone failed to do their duty? In being kind, you give these people faith again, faith in humanity, and show them how to be a good steward to others. That is why some people are so rich and able to give thousands to charity. But also you have to factor in, you disempower someone if you just give them money as well. It's a thin line. Yeah, I won't elaborate any more. It is because money is coming in so fast that they do not know what to do with it. And it is coming in from this tide. I have never known anyone to tide properly and not receive a thousand times more than they have given. It may not come back all at once, but it certainly does come back. And as I have said before, heaped up, pressed down and running over. The first time I tided, I received not only a bigger return in actual cash than I had given, but more stage work came to me from the most unexpected sources. And what a supreme sense of uplift you feel when you tied for the first time. You know in that glorious moment that is is divinely right and that you must follow it. You feel that at long last you are taking the right step. Tithing fulfills the law of increase. Your supply of money will be greatly increased. Charles Fillmore started 40 years ago with seven pennies in this world. But he blessed those seven pennies and he began to tithe even on that small amount. Every day he would go into the silence and bless humanity. It only takes a moment or two. Now he has property valued more than 18 millions. He, that was back in the 1950s. He gets money from all over the world. That is ex exactly what you can do. Every day you can bless somebody else. There is no race of people so forgiving as the Jewish race. There is no race of people who can stand the insults and abuse as the Jews and can serve you with a smile on their face and call you my dear, a typical expression. No race of people can take insults so kindly. When you give, you must deem it a pleasure to give. Have two wallets, one for your tithe money and one for your own personal money. If you have no financial reserve whatever, be prepared to deny yourself something until you get it. Hold on to half of it. A millionaire told me how, before he became wealthy, he always saved half and spent half, however small the amount. He made it a principle. Immediately you have scraped together a nice little bit. You must plan to make more money from it. You must let this idea sink deep into your subconscious. Saving up alone is not enough. You will not find it easy to hold on to your cash. Everybody will be after it. But don't loan, give, as I said before. Give out of your tide, not out of the money you are saving and going to make work for you. Get money, keep money to work for you, make it grow. You must act, you must find ways and means of making money work for you. Money is the root of all evil, it is said. Money isn't everything. These silly expressions are uttered by the unintelligent. Many people talk about fo money foolishly. And you must be seen. Take yourself where riches are. Take yourself to the very best hotel for tea or go to a famous and smart hotel bar for a drink. Holiday at the places where wealthy people congregate. If you can't afford it right now, make sacrifices until you have put away enough to do it. Go to Monte Carlo, St. Moritz, anywhere on the Riviera where rich people can be seen and where they can see you. Go to the premiere of a film or the Royal Command performance, anywhere you can rub shoulders with the wealthy people. And if you know of anybody who really knows how to make money, by hook or by crook, determine to meet them. Very often this is done through some hobby, which gives an excuse to get in touch. Try to get personally acquainted with those who know how to make money. Those who have nice homes and big cars. Like attracts like. And if it is riches you are after, get in that environment as much as you can. 
live in the rich end of the town. As soon as you make up your mind that one day soon you will have a lot of money, you lay the groundwork for a series of causes that will unleash forces to bring you big results. Spending money to give other people a treat is said to be very lucky. Good luck comes to anyone who gives pleasure to others. Money is made round to go round, and one who spends freely seems always to have money, whereas the one who is over careful never seems to have any. Windfalls and money prizes come to those who are generous. To him that hath shall be given. To him that hath gratitude, more shall be given. Behave as you would if you had plenty. You are not generous if you give only to your own family. That is your duty. You are not generous if you give only that which you think you can afford. It is when you make sacrifices and do without something in order to make someone else happy that you become a generous person. When you were very young you expected money off your parents, off aunts and uncles who called at the house, or a visitor who just popped in for a while. You expected sixpence or a shilling or a half a crown. That expectancy got it for you. The magic of getting is expectancy. You give of your tide to those in trouble. You give to your own flesh and blood. You give to this and you give to that. But do you spend money to give others a nice surprise? These actions set up a good magnetic vibrations. Does happiness mean having plenty of money? Would you like to be rolling in money or just have enough to get by? I know all the answers. You want more money. Why not? You have never had it so good, perhaps, but you want it a lot better. You want success symbols to show the world how well you are progressing. A television set larger than your next door neighbours, a swing hammock for the garden, a washing machine, a spin dryer, a flashy car, holidays abroad, a weekend cottage with roses round the door. You want things to show for all the hard work you are doing. Money, money, money. Remember Roy Rogers, the multi-millionaire film star, king of the cowboys. How did he get so rich? Roy would not tolerate lying or not keeping a promise. Grace before meals was part of a routine in the ranch where he and his family lived. Quote, Lord, I thank you for this food, my work and my wonderful friends. Thank you for everything and make us better people, unquote. Yes, that was what he used to say. And that everything included three luxurious cars, eight Palomino horses, 350 acres of grain at Lake Hughes, 1,200 acres of grazing at Marysville, 200 acres of prize Hertfords, quite apart from the immense income from show business, stage, television, films, records and broadcasting. Every week he would make long distance telephone calls to 30 or 40 children who were all ill, injured or in trouble, and he would give them a simple pep talk, like the psychologist that he was. He adored helping youngsters. When asked the secret of his fan fantastic fortune, he said, Quote, the big reason for my success is that the kids remember me in their prayers. Unquote. He was a wonderful man and he observed the laws of getting. He tried to be pure. No lies, no broken promises. He observed the laws of giving and gave to everyone, particularly children. He was deeply grateful for the blessings of plenty and gave thanks every day that passed. No wonder he became a multi-millionaire. You would like to be a multi-millionaire? But you think it would be deadly dull having to stick to the truth all the time. You think you would be bored to tears if you had to keep every promise you made. And the children, why should you concern yourself with other people's kids? It may sound humdrum to you, but it wasn't to Roy Rogers who knew how to bring the magic out of his mind. Quote, go now and do likewise, unquote. Don't envy a multimillionaire, mimic him. He was just an exception, you think. Oh no, there are very many millionaires and multimillionaires and billionaires who would do all this sort of thing. Philanthropy, they call it now. And too many people to tell you you hear. I could write a book about how many there are. The old order of things, the old world you live in, must pass away. You have got to change your thoughts. If you want big money and all the wonderful things it can bring you, you have got to observe that the law of getting. Magic follows. Can't you bring out the magic in my mind without all that talk of self-denial, you say? Self-sacrifice, purity? You don't have to be miserable to be moral. I'm always doing something for somebody, you say. 
chopping wood, carrying coal, running errands, the lot. Hardly anybody says thank you. I'm a darned fool, mate, and you tell me to go on making sacrifices. I'm not going on with all that nonsense. I've never got anything from anybody, not a carrot from the garden or an apple off a tree. In the world of magic, you don't do things with the idea of somebody giving you something or saying thank you. You do things because you genuinely want to make people happy without any thought of what you might get in return. Once that creeps into it, the magic spell is broken. It won't work. A man must die to his old self and be born again to new ideas. Money means happiness, and it often means health. The utter, utterly false idea that money creates trouble is a thought conveniently used by those men and women who have no desire to get on in life. Hangers-on, losers, who find it easier and more pleasing to sponge on somebody else. Theirs is a lazy mind. Life should be a dancing thing. But to most people it is not. They have a bit of money in hand and they just manage to come out level at the end of a week or month living paycheck to paycheck and they always seem to be that little bit behind so that they have to spend their days trying desperately, feverishly to catch up, get straight, to make ends meet. Think of the lives of the famous self-made millionaires. Why have they risen above the mass of their fellows? Men like the late Jock John Rockefeller, Sir Thomas Lipton and the first Lord Leverholm became millionaires when the men who, with whom they spent their boyhood were still in the ranks of workers. What was their secret? Lipton slept under his counter when he lived in his first little shop in Glasgow. He knew hunger but never complained. Lord Leverhulme and Lord Northcliffe both started with nothing, yet they were never fed up with life. These men accepted life without a grumble. Boot was penniless when he started. Le Lever was a traveller, Hartley a grocer, and Bass a carrier. They had scarcely a bean and certainly no influence, but they knew how to bring the magic out of their minds. Smith's thousands of bookstalls and shops commenced with two brothers who wrapped up newspapers at four o'clock in the morning. Most of us are asleep. Whitley's developed from a ribbon counter, and Piers from a Soho barber who made his own soap. Then there was the man who made matches as a sideline to blacking. That led to Bri Bryant's success. The would-be millionaire must be a fanatic, a red-hot flame. These self-made millionaires were all stickers, and smilers. They could not see defeat. For wealth they were prepared to show super optimism, even in the face of seeming failure. Money has been in the minds of these millionaires all the time. They wanted enough to uplift their spirit, to be free, to be extravagant, luxurious, independent, secure, to be able to go to the limit, to give it away if they wanted to. They made the wilderness bloom and blossom like a rose through magic. It is not a matter of how you can get more. It is, where are you withholding? You are here to give to humanity. The law of increase does not rest. The law of increase does the rest. Gypsy Smith told the story of how a man went into business with the determination to put others first. Success came quickly, and he moved into a larger house, saying to his wife, for every £500 we spent on our new home, we will spend the same amount on the poor. He did that. When the time came he could afford to spend 1000 on his home, he gave a similar amount to the poor. He became an amazing success. He had the Midas touch, and everything seemed to turn to gold. Nicolino Alfonso Romano, who was a waiter at the Café Royal, bought a fish and chip shop in the Strand, and turned it into his little restaurant. Quote, I have staked all my all on this, unquote, he said to his solicitor as he waited for the men to put the roof on. Then he commanded his subconscious to bring him good fortune. He had the good fortune all right. The actors, gamblers, writers and sports of Victoria's days went to enjoy themselves at Romano's. The King Edward to be took a private room there. Then the Gaiety girls came with their noble escorts. When Romano died in 1901, 
whose body was laid in an unclosed coffin upstairs, and the gaiety girls, the peers, bookmakers, priests, scribes and jockeys filed past. Romano had had an astonishing success because he let his subconscious take control and believed. If anybody says to you, how the devil can I make more money? Hand him this book. He needs to bring out the magic in his mind. Once on the BBC's Billy Cotton's Wakey Wakey show, I put up a thousand pound challenge to four of the leading newspaper television correspondents. In a locked box, I placed a cheque for one thousand pounds. In five sealed envelopes, I placed five keys. Only one of those keys would open to the locked box. My challenge was this. The correspondents could each choose one of these numbered envelopes, numbered one to five, and one of the keys contained therein would open the box. Then the money was for the holder of the key. You may remember how those shrewd, no-nonsense reporters choose their numbers, how I asked them if they would like to change their minds and how only one did. You may recall that, you may recall that I held envelope number two in my hand after the exchange. Then the holders of envelopes 1, 3, 4 and 5 opened their envelopes, extracted their keys, tried to unlock the box and they all failed. After which I opened my number 2 envelope, took out the key, opened the box and there before the very eyes of the journalist committee on stage was a cheque for 1,000 which I retained. Magic.